What's going on everyone, Kazi here, and welcome to another Cause and Effect Photoshop video. Before we get into it, make sure you guys hit that like button if you enjoyed this video, and if you wanna see more, make sure you hit that subscribe button as well. And you know what, while you're clicking buttons, uh, check me out on Twitter, you can uh, follow me there, it'll show up on screen, and I'm sure there's a link below in the description as well. But uh, let's just get right into it here. We've got some animals from China. We've got some unique ones here. We've got the golden snub-nosed monkey We've got the red crowned crane as well as the red panda the iconic giant panda and a creature that is new to me The golden talking so let's just get right into it and uh, see what we can create here So the panda is where we're gonna start things here just uh, trimming them up They're an iconic animal and uh, when I saw the panda I, I kind of knew what I was going for with this video uh, I knew right away that I wanted to do uh, something along the lines of the North American creature that we did um, where it had like the bear as the base of the body uh, kind of similar to the one that we did for the US actually so uh, right away we get this uh, panda it's in a pretty crazy stance um, I'm pretty sure that's a log that it's sitting on um, I hope it is because I'm yeah, otherwise it's just a, a panda's grundle and uh, we just got a nice close-up look at its uh, crotch there or maybe it is its crotch no oh my god maybe it is its balls well sorry for the shame there panda didn't mean to highlight but I mean Let's be honest, you're not embarrassed of that big thing you got hanging down there. This is uh, the golden snub-nosed monkey. Let's uh, take our focus away from that junk there. Uh, this is a pretty unique creature. Um, I've recently been seeing a lot of photos of them online. So when I wanted to pick the face for this creature, I knew that the golden snub-nosed monkey was the way to go. I mean, it fits on this body perfectly. I mean, it's just as chunky as the panda is. And uh, let's be real, it's just got this kind of... I don't know, like stoic look to it. It's deep in thought. It already has this kind of like monk look to it. And yep, we're back at the grundle. Let's just uh, get rid of that. We just fixed that panda. Nice little neuter job. All right, so something that I noticed right away uh, with this panda is that the leg was just kind of off. So uh, we're messing around. There's a lot of uh, new tactics that I'm trying as I do these Photoshop videos. And um, this one is coming together uh, really good really quickly. So uh, I'm trying to maneuver around with the feet and I hate feet on these Photoshop creatures, especially the ones I'm gonna keep. So uh, I was trying to see if I could get it to work in a way that was satisfactory to me, but I think I just settled on that. Uh, we do a little trimming on the shoulders of the panda and uh, already you can see what I'm going for. So uh, we're gonna dive right into it, the tail. This beast actually comes together really, really well, really quickly. Uh, you'll see that the majority of my struggle was actually with the background, and I'll explain a little bit more of that later. So uh, we've got the red panda tail. I thought it was perfect. It went really well with the golden snub-nosed monkey face. Uh, the coloration was just kind of right, so it kind of adds a nice color scheme to this so I thought I'd just start by fluffing it up making it nice and pretty using my uh, fluffing technique and already I love the way that this creature looks so briefly we've got the golden tacken the golden tacken they're a pretty unique creature I had never heard of them before I thought they were a type of goat um, but on their Wikipedia page it says they're an antelope that is very goat like so I was fooled I was tricked um, but rather than uh, just doing both of these horns I just clean this one up and uh, ultimately I'm pretty sure I just flip it up and uh, I kind of knew where this vision was going this is very similar to the North American creature in its um, design um, but the unique elements of the the Chinese and the Asian animals it, it just gives it this super cool mystical look to it that I, I just really love. And while I was at it with the horns, I thought we gotta add those ears too because I cut the snub-nosed monkey's ears off and uh, it just looks so cute. It's got this kind of um, almost like demigod, like demon look going for it already, but at the same time, it looks very wise. So I knew I wanted to um, fluff up those uh, those horns so that they blended a little better. And uh, I don't do it right away, but I just wanted to add a, an extra forehead layer there so that I can uh, see what I was able to pull off there. So I, I clean up his head a little bit, uh, but already you can see the roundness, the pandaness from both pandas, red panda and uh, giant panda. I, I do love the look of this. So giant pandas, I guess, kind of imply the existence of miniature pandas 
which uh, I don't know why they're called giant pandas. Maybe it's because red pandas were discovered first. And uh, here we've got the the crane. Like this process here with uh, getting these animals went by really fast this time. Uh, I mean, I'm starting to get pretty good at creating the creatures themselves. But um, these wings, I think, took the longest amount of time, if I'm being completely honest. Um, the, their feathers are so beautiful, and the way they're spread out, I really wanted to uh, keep it there and keep it looking pretty and clean so that for the final uh, project, or the final uh, picture, that it still kind of had the majesty and the beauty of these uh, cranes. Um, I tried to avoid stereotypical animals, like when I did the Mexican creature, like I didn't want to use like a donkey in the Mexican creature. Um, but it was actually really hard to find photos for a lot of these animals. I mean, you'd think that with all the billions of pictures of pandas out there, it wouldn't have been so hard to find one standing up, but uh, the quality of the picture I ended up using was serviceable for what I was doing, but isn't usually the quality of image that I'm looking for, but I'd say it turned out pretty good. So we got this big regal wing and uh, I didn't cheap out on these wings. I didn't just flip them and turn them the other way because I wanted to kind of give some respect to this animal. I mean, these uh, red uh, crowned cranes, they're beautiful creatures. Um, they're symbols of good luck. And I mean, culturally, they're pretty important to a lot of people over in that part of the world. So I wanted to do them some justice, give them some angelic beauty some uh, a little tender love when I was cutting these wings out and you know what that my patience paid off uh, like I said we're only five minutes into this video roughly and the fact that we're pretty well done we're on the wings of this creature just goes to tell you that the majority of this video is not the creature I struggled uh, there were a couple struggles for example my computer seemed to be dying while I was trying to make this uh, creation as well as uh, I was having just typical problems with the scene I was sitting. Usually my favorite part, which is designing the background, ended up being the biggest pain. And uh, as we go through that, I'll kind of walk through the struggles that I was having. Um, but yeah, these wings, they look beautiful. I love the kind of subtle folds that you see in the black, the way it blends in with the white, the gray. They're really beautiful animals. And I'm not surprised that they have such a cultural significance over in that part of the world, for sure. Um, a lot of these creatures are uh, endemic to China, but the, the red crowned crane is actually kind of all over that part of Asia. They can be found in Japan as well as China, but that's mainly because they can fly. They're birds. So we do a little tracing here on the forehead. I teased it earlier so that we can get some fluffing going. And uh, while I'm fluffing, I just get right into the zone here. We start with the, the head of the monkey, but then we just go right down into that panda right down into it and uh, that sounded weird to say but hey this panda is looking nice and fluffy it kind of makes it easier to trace these all out too because I don't have to worry about like the natural furs and things like that because I'm just going to add my own fur anyway and it, it's a lot more uniform when I do it this way so uh, sorry for neutering you earlier giant panda good thing you're no longer endangered uh, that's kind of weird to think that we've there's apparently way too many pandas nowadays We've been so successful with breeding pandas that they literally have just so many of them now So I wanted to get a beard on this snub-nosed monkey. They look great. I love the horns and ears on this It just looks so cool. And uh, like I said the creature itself easy I had no issues getting this creature together, but This is where I can start to explain my troubles here now. You see all this bamboo I wanted to have a nice tranquil bamboo background going on for this creature, um, but it ended up being my downfall here. And because I liked the, the kind of scenery, I was committed to it and I wasn't gonna change it. And um, it gave me a hard time as a result of that. So we got the, uh, the monkey here, he's looking great. It, the blue looks really good with the green in the background of his face. Uh, I didn't know that there were monkeys that looked like these snub-nosed monkeys. They are cute and creepy all in one and I think that's why they're so amazing actually so like I said you can tell right away that uh, I was having some troubles you can see my computers even starting to freeze up we're sp speeding things up so quickly and you can even tell that my computer is dying I'm just trying to find a, a good image nothing's loading at a speed that's reasonable I keep getting uh, like alerts that it's gonna crash and it's stressing me the heck out so basically every time I pop back into the window I'm saving it and uh, seeing what I can do and uh, find a staff that I thought might work but when I finally got it all uh, touched up and everything like that 
Uh, it didn't really look the way I wanted it to. Uh, the quality of the image wasn't that great, and I had already made some sacrifices in terms of quality. So I was like, you know what? Uh, after I kind of lined it up to see what it would look like, I just ultimately wasn't happy with the look. So we move on. I find some fantasy staffs that I think suit my needs a little bit more. It didn't need to have a stereotypical kind of Asian uh, style to it. Uh, that's not really what I was going for. You know, mystical is mystical. And even though I would have loved a bamboo staff, um, I think this is serviceable. This is just as good. And it really kind of adds some uniformity again with the North American beast and that these upright walking creatures, these sages, uh, I guess is what we call the last one, the sage of the West. This one could be the sage of the East for sure. I mean, I needed a scroll for it. Uh, this I actually thought was unique because rather than just taking an asset, um, I needed to kind of create my own on this one because I couldn't find the closed scrolls that I was looking for. Uh, so I just cropped out the middle there, brought it in, boom, now we've got a scroll. Perfect. We can put it right into the panda, panda hands, and there we go. Now we've got a Sage of the East right there. I think that's just what we're going to call this one. Perfect. It's the Sage of the East. So um, I knew I wanted a red panda somewhere in these images, um, but my original idea was to have like a tiger and a clouded leopard standing behind it. But as you can see with um, this bamboo, um, there's a lot of depth in this picture that's really hard for me to kind of convey uh, with these creatures. So you see, I try doing a little trick here with the, the tiger to try to get it to, to kind of slink behind these bamboo pieces. But uh, ultimately, it ended up just looking kind of bad, uh, like a two-legged tiger. So I said, screw that. I need something that's a little simpler that can sit in the foreground. And I thought maybe a panda, but no, ultimately, I just went back to the red panda. And you kind of see the struggle going back and forth because this is the same issue uh, I mentioned earlier where I was having a really hard time finding good stock images that I could use and easily Photoshop. And um, these pandas were giving me a pretty hard time. But um, ultimately, what I thought was originally going to be two, I powered through, I made it work. Oh, God, here comes the burp. But... Uh, we ended up adding a few more of these pandas in here, these red pandas. So maybe these are the miniature pandas that, uh, you know, giant pandas, miniature pandas, or red pandas. Uh, I don't know. I feel like it's not doing justice. I, I'm still imagining very tiny pandas that just live somewhere in uh, the Chinese wilderness. So um, soften these guys up because, again, I wasn't able to find many uh, PNG uh, files of uh, these pandas. So I really just went in on them. I spent a lot more time uh, trying to clean up these images than I did on the main creature itself, the Sage of the East. Um, I was really indecisive. I wanted more creatures in there and I probably could have spent a little extra time photoshopping this crane, but uh, I ultimately gave up and I'm glad I did because my end product was a lot better than what I had originally planned. Um, but you know, there isn't a lot of animal diversity in this one, which kind of bugged me a little bit. I don't know what it is. It, it was just really hard to find um, Chinese animals that were, you know, easily photoshopped and fit in. Like even I tried to get some diversity in birds rather than just the cranes, um, you know, maybe a statue here and there. Uh, the statue folders weren't really working out and my computer was kind of failing me. So I was getting a little bit frustrated, to be honest with you. So when I kind of settled finally on these giant pandas, or not giant pandas, red pandas, uh, I just kind of went crazy with it. I was like, I'm using all these crappy stock photos. I don't care if I got to clean them. This is an animal that fits in the foreground. It's cute. It's just going to, it's going to have its own little place. It's going to be special and loved. And each of them is going to have their own little personality quirk. And uh, it's going to turn out all right. So you've got these cute little pandas. Oh my God, his face is just so precious, these little guys. And uh, just a little clean up along the side. And I thought maybe I was going to be happy with three, but I ultimately added uh, a fourth one in there to kind of balance out the photo a little bit. So rather than this one kind of having a whole host of critters as its uh, little minions, I guess this Sage of the East just is in tune with the bamboo forest and works alongside a bunch of these cute little, cute little red pandas. And I think it, it works out pretty good if I'm being completely honest with you guys here. Um, the pandas are super cute animals, and I don't think I mentioned it, but they aren't actually related to pandas. It just seems to be like 
this weird uh, design choice that everything decided to go with uh, over in that part of the world. And you know what? I'm not going to complain about it because look at this thing. It turned out so good. I mean, the creature itself, I had a feeling it was just going to be really well like uh, adjusted. Um, when I saw the snub nose monkey, I knew that was going to be the perfect face. I knew that the crane wings were going to be perfect. It was like the perfect counterpart to the western creature that had the Canadian goose, or sorry, the, actually I'm pretty sure it was eagle wings in that picture. Um, and it just worked out. There was kind of like a version of each animal in this part of the world, um, you know, and it, it turned out pretty good. I'm really satisfied with how it turned out. Um, if you guys want to check out that video, uh, the, the Sage of the West, uh, which I guess is now the counterpart to the Sage of the East, um, I would love uh, for you guys to check that video out. Uh, the picture will show up there and the link will be in the comments down below. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really happy with how this final product turned out. I think this one turned out really good. I mean, we got a really good staff going for it. We cleaned it up. We got these, this cool little scroll, kind of reminiscent of that Kung Fu Panda dragon scroll. And uh, even though I was having some complications with the background, I kind of like that this this sage is just being followed around by all these kind of troublemaking little red pandas it adds a really cute aesthetic and i really just love the way it turned out i definitely have to do a video where i get all of these creatures into one setting together like the council of the the beasts i don't know what we're gonna do but uh, if you guys enjoyed this video like i said before make sure you hit that like button make sure you hit that subscribe button because i'm coming at you with all kinds of videos up here in the future if you guys have any suggestions on what kind of creature you'd like me to do or what part of the world you like me to venture to just drop them down below and uh, i try to interact as much as i can with you guys and uh this one wasn't a request but uh it was definitely one that i was looking forward to so if there's anywhere that you guys want to see uh leave it in the comments down below and hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed this video so until then my name's kazi thank you so much for watching and uh you guys have a great